Hi there, everybody. Let's talk about what happens when you have multiple uh, reactions. And uh, here's the grand secret. We always have multiple reactions. We can do things as engineers to make it so the reactions of interest are heavily favored, but uh, always it is the case that we can't make it so only one thing ever happens. Chemical species gonna chemical. They're gonna do it. And so they will be doing uh, whatever reactions are thermodynamically favorable. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how we control that uh, in the future. But you should always assume any reaction system you're working with is a multi-reaction system. And uh, when we do that, it means we're going to use the same math we've been using, where uh, capital K EQ is equal to e to the negative delta g over rt, which is equal to uh, a product based on uh, the activities. Uh, but here is the thing. That equation that I just stated is true at equilibrium for each reaction that is happening. So we're going to have multiple Cs and multiple Ks happening at the same time, and we're going to have to solve this as a system of equations. So let's, let's look at an example to make this more concrete. Imagine we have A plus B goes to C, and C plus A goes to D. We're going to write expressions for the number of moles of each thing. So the number of moles of A, like normal, is the initial number of moles we started with, minus C1. Oh yeah, there's going to be two different Cs. So we got a C for reaction 1, the A plus B goes to C. Now we're going to have C2 with reaction 2. So it's minus C1 minus C2. You see that? Yeah. Okay, so now let's roll forward. Let's write it out for all of the species. Number of moles of B is the initial moles and minus C1. And you'll notice there's no C2 in its equation because it doesn't participate in that reaction. It's an inert in that reaction. So there's just a blank space right there. Uh, number of moles of C is your initial number of moles uh, plus C1, because C1 generates, you know, reaction 1 generates it, minus C2, because C uh, reaction 2 consumes it. So we've got that flip there. And then finally, D is whatever the initial moles were, uh, plus however many moles we get of it out of reaction 2. So now, what do we do with this? Well, we have the... Uh, we're, we're going to write the expressions for mole fractions, and we're going to use those expressions for mole fractions as the fugacity or the, the activity of our chemical uh, in question. And so the thing that you um, will note here is that even though I have an expression for capital K for reaction one that I'm going to be able to solve independently, um, well, it's not totally independently, because you'll notice C2 shows up in my equation for reaction one because y sub a has c2 in it all the time. So I solve for I solve for k1, I solve for k2, I have got to solve for them simultaneously because we have two equations, the two different k eqs, and two unknowns, c1 and c2. Uh, this will be a complicated bit of algebra and you may notice, those of you who are in uh, Diff EQs, or think back to Diff EQs, this is a problem that is uh, really well suited to solving in linear algebra, and it's the sort of thing MATLAB was written to solve. Yay fun. So, let's solve a problem, or at least set up and think deeply about a problem involving multiple reactions. So, let's look at our favorite reaction, steam reformation of methane to make syngas. And um, I've been writing this reaction a whole bunch of times, but if you imagine all of the chemical species participating in this, there's a bunch of different reactions you could potentially write. And uh, so what I want you to do first is think about brainstorm. Uh, pick, you know, we're gonna pick like five minutes. You're gonna brainstorm as many balanced reactions as you can come up with that use uh, anything from this reaction. So it doesn't have to use all four pieces of it. It could just be um, uh, methane plus CO does something. Um, so 
be creative in a chemical sense. What are all the different ways you can think of putting these things together? Now, it's going to be true that some of what you've just brainstormed is going to be extremely unlikely. It's going to be extremely unfavorable thermodynamically, in which case it probably won't occur given that there are much more favorable reactions that are possible. So how we know what is going to happen versus what's not going to happen is uh, the, in, in absence of other influences, things with the more favorable KEQs are going to be what, what actually happens in the reactor, and the things with less favorable ones uh, will tend not to occur. And so we will get a quick estimate of which of these is which by uh, looking up and computing the standard state delta G of reaction for each of these reactions that you've brainstormed out. And so things that are very favorable are probably ones we need to worry about, and things that have very, very large positive delta Gs, we probably worry about less. Okay? Uh, and then we're going to set up the uh, system of equations for what would happen uh, with uh, our reaction and several of these competing reactions. Um, I'll give you a hint. We're going to be in trouble if uh, there's ever oxygen, free oxygen in our system, because CH4 uh, plus O2 is a very favorable uh, reaction, uh, much more favorable than the reaction that we have, um, that we are desiring to run. Okay, set that up. Thanks a lot.